ninth. Here's Jose Urquidy. 24 year old right hander. From Mazatlan Mexico. Limited work with the big league club started the season John in double A and here he is starting in game four of the World Series strike one on Trey Turner. Yeah, he's pitched so good the last 30 days or so he's that's why he's in this position. He's got a really good breaking ball. You see the short quick arms for a fastball and his changeup is well above average. And making his first career postseason start. 95 miles per hour. Trey Turner comes up empty one and two. Again, that's how you got to pitch Trey Turner. Trey Turner is so important. If he gets on base, and he's done it in 19 innings. Won't do it here if that stays in play. Guriel in foul ground has out number one. And Ames in this World Series. He's hit a home run, handles the bat well, and he has shown he is willing to go the opposite way. Over the first few games, strike one. Well, no. Did he go? Breaking ball, no swing. One ball, one strike. Coming back from Tommy John, and he is starting to feel like he is in his groove post Tommy John. Good breaking ball for strike two. He's making his third appearance this postseason. His first start, as we said, worked in the division series at Tampa Bay, went an inning and two thirds, didn't allow a run. And two and two thirds innings in game six, the clinching game against the Yankees in Houston. ALCS that's popped up on the infield and foul ground Torinos two foul outs two out home plate umpire tonight is James Hoy Lance Barksdale is at first Sam Holbrook at second Jim Wolf who started this series in New York in the replay room is at third with Doug Eddings in left and Gary Cedarstrom, the crew chief, out in right. And with two out and nobody on, here's Anthony Rendon. Last night swung at the first pitch three different at bats and flied out each time. Here he takes a tight breaking ball for strike one. Yeah, this is a guy that's not afraid to. Get deep in the count. He had not had much success off of Granky, and it looked like he was definitely going up there. The first one he was able to see, he attacked, and they popped every one of them up. That's in the left field, hard hit, base hit, as Brantley goes to cut it off. We showed you the umpires for tonight's game, and I know we were live on TV before this ball game started moment of silence here at Nationals Park for Chuck Merriweather who passed away at the age of 63 today and our condolences to his wife Rita and his sons Christopher and Jeremy was behind the plate game four of the 2004 World Series when the Red Sox won their first championship in 86 years. Here's Juan Soto. Hard hit the right at Bregman. You can't hit it any harder. Soto frustrated. Go to BGCA.org. Urquidy gave up a two out hit to Rendon. Threw a scoreless first, and that one wanders outside for ball one. Howie Kendrick, then Ryan Zimmerman, then Victor Robles for Washington, down by a couple. Hunt! For Urquidy, over his last nine outings, he's put together a 2.75 ERA, struck out 40, walked only eight, and just under 40 innings pitched. 
Two and one. Uh, he just does a good job manipulating the baseball. He can spin it. We already talked about his fastball. Pretty straight, but has command of it. Haven't really seen the change up yet tonight. Good fastball there in a perfect spot. And the count two and two on Kendrick. And what he does is, again, the way that you can pitch, you can do a couple things. You can go north and south, which is pitch up and down. If you don't, if you throw hard, if you don't throw hard, you pitch in and out, and then you change speeds to mess up the timing of the hitter. The general rule is hard throwers, of course, and today we see a lot of them. They're going to pitch. They want to pitch up with everyone trying to get the ball in the air. That's the best recipe for that. And then they're going to spin the ball because hitting a breaking ball or curveball with high velocity is very difficult to do. 2 2 pitch here. He did not go on a check swing on a pitch up and in. And the count's full. Came close. Nationals trying to put their leadoff man on. Instead of strikeout, he went right back to that same spot at 95 miles per hour and gets his first strikeout of the night. Uh, this is just classic pitching in the top of the zone over the top fastball. He got a check swing on the previous pitch and then the full swing. You know, who knows what the end of the night will look like for Jose Urquidy, but you can tell early on one. He's comfortable out there. Doesn't look like he's overwhelmed by the size of the stage. And two, he's on the mound ready to go and waiting for the hitter. He's got a nice pace to the way he works. Yeah, he's not afraid. I mean, that's for sure. And that's one thing to say, and a harder thing to do when you haven't had a lot of experience and you're thrust in a World Series with your team trailing two to one and you know who's pitching behind you. Here's a 1-0. Changed up on him in a 1 1 count. Ryan Zimmerman came up for 20 games back in 2005 after the Expos became the Nationals and went from Montreal to D.C. Bregman gets a high hop and throws wide but out as Guriel keeps his foot on the bag, two down. And joined a team that had some young players like he was back then after being their first draft pick and then there were some vets like Mike Stanton was on that team Carlos Baerga was on that 2005 Nationals team Vinny Castilla Levon Hernandez Brad Wilkerson who was a good piece Starting and coming off the bench, Marlon Bird. And it was a rough start record wise for the Nationals. Been better of late. That's fouled back and two quick strikes on Victor Robles. A team that won the division, the Nationals, in 2012, 14, 16, and 17, but they kept getting knocked out in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, some crazy games for them. High expectation as well. How good is this start so far by Urquidy? Allowed one hit and fires a strike. AJ Hinch is wearing a headset down in the dugout. You have to really like what you see from Urquidy. No kidding. He, he's really gotten into the game pretty efficiently. He's, on, he's calm. This is exactly how he looked in uh, in the summer when we first brought him up, and then certainly through September. And and I like what I see so far for sure. And it really and I wasn't expecting to go here with this interview but it really points out the difference between just analytics and numbers and spin rates and all that other stuff and then somebody gets on a stage like this and you see calm like you're seeing from her right. that can go a long way it can go a long way and the, and the stuff the stuff is really good across the board and then I think he's matured and learned how to use it a little bit I think I said before the the game in my media session that he, he you know he pitches up to the level like I've watched him in the big leagues pitch like a big leaguer you know he, he sets hitters up he goes to some weakness areas 
Um, he rarely makes you know major mistakes outside of the area that he wants to go to, and you know that's it's, he's a pitcher, but he's got plus stuff, and that that's a good look for it for us. That's rocketed down into the corner on an 0-2 pitch, and Gums will cruise into second with a double. Good start to the inning for the Nationals, and I'll just leave you with this: you had to be excited to see your third baseman Alex Bregman jump on that first pitch <laughs> when he got the RBI in the first. No kidding, you know it takes something like that for for these guys to get kick started a little bit. He swung the bat really well yesterday. Didn't he get anything to show for it? He's been in the middle of everything that we do, and and you know MVP candidate for a reason. And this this series isn't over. This his his participation in this is just starting. AJ, thanks. You got it. All right, let him go back to doing his job after the double and Corbin is up there. Everybody expects the bunt. Got to bunt it to third base. A man on second, nobody out. You got to make Bregman field it so you can get the runner over. The first baseman, Guriel, will be charging, reading the bat head of Corbin when he squares around. Gomes is the catcher, does the running, and this one's popped up. Nice sliding effort by Chirinos, but can't get there. Strike one. You know you're going to bunt. You really want to get out there, and it's a timing thing. You don't want to be late squaring around. Everyone is anticipating you to bunt. There's a great effort here with that brick wall he's got to slide into. And the angle of the bat that you set will determine how and where you're going to bunt the ball. You've got all that space between the pitcher and the third baseman. It does not have to be a good bunt here, meaning it can be firm, and there's nothing bring. Br Bregman can do about it. Oh, yeah, and throw, throw him out of first. He had four sacrifices during the regular season, Corbin did. And then he drops it down. The runner holds one out. And Corbin did not advance the runner. And that was a really good read by Gomes because. Rakiti got off the mound real well, so you got to get it to the third baseman, and he bunted that and a good read by everybody. You got to know your pitcher for your third baseman to read that, because if he charges in too fast, the runner can go to third. But Bregman read it perfectly. It's the little things that start in spring training as pitchers that you cannot take for granted. You don't know when that's going to come into play to really help. Increase the chances of your team scoring. So now Gomes at second, one out, back to the top of the order, and Trey Turner. Ball. Ball one. Mentioned it earlier last night. The Nationals were 0 for 10 with runners in scoring position in game three, and they left 12 runners on. Astra hit from Trey Turner takes the strike. <laughs> Turner's been on base in 25 straight games, all 13 for the Nationals coming in this postseason. He's 0 for 1 tonight. Boy, he was fooled on that pitch. Strike two. To it and it's fouled away. Rikini made an 0-2 pitch, too good to Gomes, and he smoked it into the corner for a double. Corbin trying to bunt, did not advance the runner, and with one out, a one-two count on Turner. Stairs at 95, two and two. Great pitch. Outside fastballs are where he gets the most called strikeouts because 
He's looking middle to middle in, and this was a great effort. Just a little bit lower. For a two out RBI hit out of the gate his team gave him a lead. He's got a little rope to work with And an opportunity to get through three innings and When it's a bullpen game, that's a big deal Runner in third two out breaking ball strike one catches the inside corner to Eaton who fouled out his first time Astros pitching trying to flip the script on Washington. Astros struggled through games one and two with runners in scoring position and have for the most part this postseason. 0 1 into center field. Caught on a spinning catch in shallow left center by Correa, and that was not easy. Almost have to score in this inning. They have to get back in the game. 2 0 and get some people on base and have Martinez make a decision with Corbin and get somebody going in the bullpen. This is a crucial inning for the Nationals, in my opinion, at this stage. Not much trouble so far for Arcady, who was able to pitch around a leadoff double last inning. That's fouled strike one. Well, you know what he's done? He's done a great job mixing up the first pitches to every hitter. He doesn't just lay in fastballs. He'll spin a slider. He'll be able to show a curveball, a curveball, a changeup, and he's pretty much attacking the the strike zone. Into right field, going to get it on the dead run and foul down the line as Springer couldn't get there. And if he can't get there. I can't think of anybody playing right that would. Just foul, by the way, and nearly a double. Yeah, this ball slices away from Springer, and he gives it an unbelievable effort. Last minute dive. You can see, I think it catches the dirt. Just barely on the other side of the, the line. Oh, man. When we were talking to manager AJ Hinch before we came on or Heedy was warming up and he kind of John lollipops the ball into the plate doesn't throw hard at all he's warming up he's just throwing strikes but throwing at about 50 miles an hour and then the inning starts and bang here he is 2-2 two -two pitch bang into left to right at Brantley and Rendon's one for two Here's Juan Soto lined out hit the ball right on the screws his first time up but right at Bregman who's in the same spot way off the line and in ball ball one outside Patented. foot turned in until two strikes looking to do damage power early and then with two strikes he'll open up that foot and stride. Ball and a strike. Characteristically struck out three times yesterday. That's not a good way to uh, celebrate your 21st no, birthday. It's not. I, uh, I had a friend text me that said Juan Soto was a much better hitter when he was younger. <laughs> this guy is a star. Ball. And. You know, we even when we go in and talk to these managers and talk to different players, rarely do they acknowledge that a guy in that other lineup is circled the way Juan Soto is circled by A.J. Hinch and the Astros pitchers. 
They are thoroughly impressed with this kid. And how could you not be? Because they're only really seeing video. They don't see him up close. And when you see him up close in a series like this, you start seeing the at bats, the procedure of which he goes about every at pitch when he takes it. So yeah, you, you start becoming that a little bit amazed and you go, okay, I am not gonna let that guy in any circumstance beat me. And the fact that you can't pitch him the same way every time already, he adjusts. And he adjusts here with two strikes. Chokes up, put in a different position. That rides up and away in the count four. He's just got a presence at the plate that you rarely see. Reach your delivery. Struck him out, came right after him with 96. Third strikeout for Urquidy, and how about this 24-year-old right-hander? Sneaky gas. I mean, lulls you to sleep a little bit, and all of a sudden, 96, the top of the zone. Tremendous. 4-0 lead, he said, here, hit it. Came right after him, and he couldn't. Breaking ball, ball now, pretty good pitch. Urquidy doesn't get it. Ball one on Howie Kendrick. Struck out his first time on a pitch that was up and in. Ball two. center field and Marisnik to his left let's say this between Cole Scherzer Verlander Strasburg Grinke is the day that the Astros are trying to even this series at two games apiece how about this with all the high power pitching and high price pitching between Cole Scherzer Verlander Strasburg through the first four innings of a ball game so far in this World Series or has been the most effective he has he's been on he's going to be unknown to the Nationals of course there's nobody really that has any experience off of them and they're getting a chance to see a guy who looks confident and like he's been in the league for five years mix and match his pitches he's had these hitters off balance all night Zimmerman grounded out to third his first time In what was dubbed as a bullpen game for the Houston Astros, the bullpen has been quiet. It has. And again, a dream scenario for AJ. He had a lot of confidence in this young man. Really come on the last month of the season, played an important role in the ALCS. an origin story for Jose Urquidy Tom that's a pretty good one you know we're used to seeing international free agent signed around 16 years old the Astros didn't sign Urquidy until he was 19 that's because his mom insisted that he finish high school before beginning his professional career now he first had a tryout with the White Sox and an Astros scout by the name of Raul Lopez saw that tryout from behind a strand of trees Astros wind up signing him for four hundred thousand dollars now he pitched for a state team in Sinaloa Mexico and on that same team his teammate Roberto Osuna Ball. as well as Julio Urias a left-handed pitcher with the Los Angeles Dodgers that's a pretty good youth team but what you're seeing here tonight his ability to make pitches all kinds of pitches but especially the changeup to me Joe that's the pitch that sets him apart He's got extra special fade movement on that changeup, and he's always had that pitch. 2 2 here, rides up and in on Zimmerman at 95. Chirinos 
Tells him not to fly open after that last pitch. And the count's full now with Robles and Jan Gomes, the next two hitters. Nationals have put their leadoff man on only once. That was a leadoff double by Gomes in the third. And he was stranded. Action with the right hander Wander Suero getting loose for Dave Martinez. As we are toward the bottom of the lineup here, here and a strikeout starts the inning. Number four for Urquidy. That is just so impressive. Zimmerman worked it to three and two. He's got like different arm angles at times for his fastball, which creates a little bit of an illusion. And they've got to really be ready for any pitch at any time. And the four seam fastball comes in there and gets past the barrel of Zimmerman. And no trouble here, second time through the order. In fact, nobody's reached against him the second time through. He's retired eight straight overall, but one through six now, as they've seen him once and now twice, and nobody's reached. First pitch of ball, ball. now another to Victor Robles, who struck out his first time. Made a nice catch in the top of this inning. On a ball hit by Michael Brantley into shallow left center. 2-0 pitch. Ball. 3-0. Here's that catch. Statcast AI powered by AWS. Covered 44 feet. And a catch probability of 5%. Yeah. I agree with that one. And Chirinos might have just given a sign to AJ. As the bullpen gets going. 3 0 pitch right down the middle. Seeing the stuff maybe from Chirino's point of view, just a little tick off, you can imagine. <laughs> just a couple outs away from getting through five, which I don't know if a lot of people expected would happen. Josh James, a right hander getting up and loose. Here's a fly ball into right, jammed him. Springer. For out number two. And the batter will be Gomes, who has one of just two hits so far against Jose Urquidy. Halloween, John's favorite evening is right around the corner. It's growing on me. Thursday. <laughs> Here's a ball. ball up and into Jan Gomes. Could be flying on Thursday. After game seven, I'm just saying, if it goes seven. If it does go seven, game seven would be Wednesday night in Houston. Nationals trying to win here. They have a chance to end it tomorrow. High fly ball to right. Urquidy is through five shutout innings. He has stepped up front and center. Jose Urquidy.